Thank you. Emily, there, you know, again, this is a very, very murky, you know, report. And there's this agreement among U.S. officials that Syria's official declaration to the OPCW has been made largely in good faith after the yeah. threat of military action by the United States. And they believe that Assad will carry it through. But, you know, putting that report aside, can we believe that this will happen? Well, uh, I mean, as you said, so far, so good. Right. It seems that uh, Syria is cooperating in good faith, uh, uh, as much as it can cooperate in good faith. And so far, the OPCW is, seems to be relatively satisfied with their reporting. Um, and there's even been initial uh, destruction of some of the production uh, facilities. So in that sense, um, this report seems to be not in line with what we're hearing from the o OPCW. On the other hand, I would say, and first of all, this report does, I mean, we have to say that it does say that there's nothing definitive. Definitive, so, right. That there's just um, They be. are, you know, yeah. uh, not, not uh, uh, reporting this as some kind of clear intelligence that still I mean it reported well it yeah. look I mean it would surprise me if we don't see reports like this uh, over the next uh, six to seven months until because um, I think the sense is first of all Syria was deceiving the international community for years it does not have a good track record right. as far as being you know upright let's not forget there's the chemical issue there was also the nuclear issue True. Syria is a member of the NPT the nuclear non-proliferation treaty they were cheating on that there was a facility it was bombed so you know Syria doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't come record. together with um, a, a member in good standing as far as uh, upholding its obligations. Um, up until recently, Syria considered its nuclear weapons capability as a real strategic asset. So when you think of it in, that, in those terms, it would make sense that Syria might be trying to find some way to retain some part of its nuclear weapons, weapons capability. So it's not something that would be, you know, so that, that should, exactly, so shocking or su should surprise us. Um, they do say in the report that they're going to try to, you know, check this information with, through various intelligence means, whether satellite imagery or operatives on the ground. I think they're intercepting you know telephone conversations etc so we'll have to see how 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 that, that how that yeah um, no, I mean, the time will tell but of course you know if that breaks apart then you know that the the options on the table we all know and um you know aren't good yeah for but but I think the main message is Syria is cooperating and at this point it does uh, the situation looks much more positive than negative I mean, you know, it's, the word positive um, being heard in that sense is, is always a good thing. I want to move um, uh, to Iran. Um, uh, talks begin today, still in foreign policy. Nuclear talks between world powers and Iran resumed today in Geneva. Last round of talks and on an optimistic note. And ahead of this round, Iran's foreign minister said a deal could be struck this week. Emily, mm -hmm. okay, um, is that even possible? Um, I would not put a lot of money on that happening in the next two days. No, I am because, and, and before you continue, because there are reports even as, you know, as early as this morning that the U.S. might be willing to ease sanctions in return right. for six months of monitoring. Exactly. I mean, what seems to be on the table right now, which I think is a little bit dangerous, I can talk about that. Um, what seems to be on the table right now is, as they say, a deal that will put more time on the clock. In other words, they want to get some kind of six-month suspension of Iran's problematic nuclear activities to be sure that for six months they're not advancing their program and then they want to use the P5 plus one would like to use those six months in order to get a comprehensive deal right now history you know yes, tell us should, about that should shows tell us it should shows us that the international community should be very wary of these kind of partial deals this is exactly what happened in the early period the 2003 2005 period there were two short periods of suspension of of these were pre uranium enrichment activities right. uranium conversion and and each period of suspension was characterized actually by um, you know continuous 
and dialogue with Iran over who agreed to what and how and what the overall agreement even was and whether Iran was upholding its end, whether well, the international the community was upholding, upholding its end. And this just becomes a platform for continuing bickering over the terms of the agreement, which is the exact opposite of this whole idea of, you know, a confidence building measure. It, it, the history shows that it did not act as a confidence building measure. And I would say that, you know, believing that you can get this partial deal, that Iran going to uphold it and not be arguing about every single article that's in the deal and then use those six months in order to get the comprehensive deal but just to play devil's advocate it's you know it's been months and months of very very tough sanctions on the country can't there be you know possibly that maybe this time around those sanctions are the stable well, not the stable you know the, 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 the Ayatollah the you know the regime is very strong the revolutionary guards but that you know they're willing to do something of you know a, a halt of six months because the country is in financial no shambles. No doubt, the reason they're back at the negotiation table is the effect of sanctions. But that's what the international community should be holding on to that lesson. Yes, pressure works. works. It brings Iran back to the table. So don't let up the pressure. No, no you no. don't let up the one thing that has helped you in this very difficult discussion. Now we hear this unnamed, you know, American official saying the last thing we should do is to go for additional sanctions because that will undermine the dipl the diplomatic process right now. But it's the sanctions that brought, that the brought them to the table. So they're, they're sort of, you know, I mean, twisting the again, logic a little bit of a, you know, in a problematic of manner. Eastern mentality in I that think respect. it's everyone's mentality, actually. I mean, this is all about, you know, strategic bargaining processes. And the Iranians are not doing anything that is, you know, is so very different from any other country that was trying to, to achieve what Iran is trying to achieve. Emily Landa, Dr. Emily Landa, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, uh, always enlightening words, as, as you always bring to the table. Mm -hmm. Thank you.